welcome to today's program as the World Affairs Council of Greater Houston hosts a conversation with Consul General of Mexico, Alicia Kerber Palma. I'm Sandia Bayou, Director of Development at the World Affairs Council of Greater Houston. It's our hope that you and your families are staying healthy. We're so glad you joined us today. I want to invite all of you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can watch this and many other recently recorded as well as upcoming programs. Now more than ever, it's important to stay informed about what is happening, not only in our city, but around the world. Our council brings foreign affairs experts right into your home. For those new to the council, you can find a listing of all of our upcoming programs and activities on our website, wachouston.org. Now on to our program. Mrs. Kerber Palma took the position of the Mexico's Council General in Houston in June of 2019. Kerber Palma has been in the United States since 2012, heading the Consulate of Mexico in Kansas City, Missouri, where she promoted the creation of the first window for the integral attention of women. And later she was posted as the Consul General in Philadelphia. Besides so many other important postings, few other notations, she was part of the funding working team for the National Commission on Human Rights and also led other positions in the Secretariat of Tourism, Secretariat of Public Education, and the Institute of Security and Social Services for State Workers. Council General, it's such an honor to call you friend of the Council. Pleasure having you with us. Welcome. On the contrary, Sanja, the pleasure is mine. It's always a, a a good opportunity to participate in all the events that the World Affairs Council does. Oh, thank you. Um, wanted to check in and see how are you doing? How is your family? Fortunately, we are every, everybody is okay. Uh, we are enjoying this opportunity to have the family complete at home. Uh, but you know, sometimes it's too much of family. <laughs> sure. So we are also enjoying those type of situations. Absolutely. And how is everyone at the consulate? I, everybody at the consulate, it's okay. We have been working in uh, a special way. Sometimes we, we, or not all the people of the consulate is going to the consulate and every day. Uh, we have got um, people that go, I don't know, like uh, only to see those cases of emergency. But the, all the, the colleagues that work there at the consulate are okay. That's, Thanks for that's, asking. Yeah, that's great to hear. Uh, for our view, uh, viewers to better understand, um, can you help us understand the size of the constituents that you uh, oversee here in Texas? Well, we have a very diverse constituents here in, in Houston. The, the jurisdiction of the consulate is integrated by 37 counties. And in these 37 counties, we think that we have around 2 million Mexicans living here. But you know, many of them don't registrate or you don't know where they are exactly because many of them can be undocumented and they don't want to share the information with nobody. So we consider that we are around two, two million Mexicans uh, that they are also in a very diverse uh, way in the different places of the society. For example, you have people working in the service area and restaurants in hotels, in, the, in also taking care of, of kids, of elderly people, uh, cleaning companies, cleaning, uh, I don't know, the houses also. But you also have a very qualified diaspora that is uh, working very hardly in the health services. For example, we know that there are DACA students that are contributing with their work in the health area. We also have uh, doctors that are in the medical center here in Houston, many Mexican uh, doctors working there. As well, we, we also have a very strong community of entrepreneurs, not only these huge companies like Lala, Gruma, Semex, Mission Foods are here, but also we have small and medium entrepreneurs that are part of this very strong and very vivid Mexican community. Wow, two million people. It's, it's the size yeah. of uh, a country uh, and diversity, as you mentioned. So I'll salute, salute you for that and more power to you, you know. Yes, uh, and to all of them, we want to, we are um, 
very committed to provide them with all their, our services at the consulate. Sure. You mentioned earlier that you, the council has adapted a little bit to, for the quarantine and you work in different teams. Uh, any other ways that you might like to highlight and why is it important? Yes, of course, uh, Sanja, we have uh, implemented 20 uh, phone lines, call centers, where our community can call and they can receive all the information and the services uh, and, and let them know when are we going to open the consulate. But if there is a case of an emergency, we immediately take attention of those cases. We have, a, for example, in daily basis, we have this Facebook Live where we are talking about uh, different topics. For example, we have had uh, conversations with specialized people in mental health. Also, we talk with uh, one uh, very, very well-known woman in the in Mexico about we talk about gender equality. We have also raised the topic about domestic violence. That is something that we are concerned here in Houston because we had also have a very close um, conversations with the police uh, chief here in Houston as well as with the sheriff of Harris County. And they had reported that the number of domestic violence reports had increased uh, tremendously. So that's something that concerns us and that uh, we are trying to, to help to all these uh, women that are suffering or passing through these terrible situations because you can see that in this um, quarantine where everybody is inside the house, um, you can have this, uh, complicated sometimes as we were talking before complicated kind of situations at home and in many occasions you have yes you have the covid pandemic outside but you also have inside another pandemic that is the the, the machismo that the, the, that makes uh, violence increase at home you know? I'm so glad you're actually talking about because it it's uh, for sure it's not only happening here in Houston and Texas it's uh, happening globally and I think that it's happening but not so many countries perhaps are addressing as they're focused on some other priorities so thank you for that. No and that, that's something that uh, makes us think in a, in a very strong way to really create something dedicated for those women that are like uh, if you see the information that is shared by the International Organization on Migration they have said that more than half of the of the of migrants or my of migration is done by women. So that is why Mexico decided uh, to this window that I create long time ago of uh, that is called the window for the integral attention of women. When we present the results to the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Mexico. They were impressed by the results, so they, uh, the ministry decided to replicate this window in the 50 consulates that we have all around the United States. Wow. So that we can give a special attention to those women, not only to, to help them get out of the, of the circles of domestic violence, but to provide them with the legal attention they require to obtain, you know, the VAWA visa, the T visa, the U visa, but also to provide them with medical services, psychological services, find them a shelter place, give them the information for their kids in, in order that they can continue their education. We want to empower women, not only solve the situation of domestic violence. The main goal of this window is to empower women where they live so that they can be independent and autonomous. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for that. Uh, no. Any other ways that you would say the consulate is addressing global issues here in Houston? Well, we, you know, we are also working very close with different strategic allies. For example, strategic allies as those ones that are working in human trafficking. We are also very concerned about uh, gun safety sure. because uh, you may know that the 70% of guns that enter to Mexico come direct from the United States. And if you see the map, you can see the map between Mexico and United States, you can identify that mainly all those guns 
come from Texas and go directly to those states in Mexico that have high levels of violence. So that's why in a very, in a, the top levels, in the Embassy of Mexico and Department of State, also the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here, they are having very, uh, having talks in order to increase the cooperation and stop that, uh, that um, traffic of, of, uh, of guns to our, co our country. That is also very linked with this other situation of human trafficking that uh, it's also very interesting to see this. I think that is the road 69 that comes from Mexico, crosses United States and goes to uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. So this road allows to see, to see how criminal organizations want to catch all those migrants that come from South America through Mexico and want to go to the United States. So I think the best way to face this situation is through a strategic of cooperation. Absolutely. So we are trying to develop all those strategic cooperation mechanisms so that we can face uh, these um, situations with a with the same view and with the same spirit of really helping each other, mainly because we are now the, the, the countries that are just have approved the, the TEMEX, so we, the, the, the treaty, free trade agreement treaty. Mm -hmm. So we want to, to make really the trade be seen in a very positive way, make it more dynamic, and to focus on that, but to solve all, also all these other situations that are affecting the relations. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, so the, the, the cooperation, yeah, the cooperation is so critical and it really showcases the fact that we don't live in isolation, that we are connected and very much to uh, what we present to our viewers is that connection to local to global and global to local. There is, uh, we don't live in isolation and the border is not really it's a border, but there's a movement and we need to uh, stay united in these larger efforts. And we have seen it just uh, in these days, uh, Sandija, because uh, we have seen that, for example, COVID doesn't respect borders. Absolutely. So if we need to face this type of emergency situation. We need to be uh, more communicated and more and increase that type of cooperation, not only in, in science, but in different type of ways. Uh, that's why we are also working with the, the universities and the community college here, so that we can also see the way to, to have more students from Mexico and United States, as well as more students from the United States in Mexico once we pass this COVID situation. Because the best way to, come, to understand the world is to really know what's going on beyond your borders Absolutely. and not to, to close your borders in order to isolate yourself. The, the world you know now it's so inter, interdependent that it's almost impossible to really think that you are just you and that's all. No? Absolutely. And uh, it, it kind of very nicely brings you to the next uh, point that we want to have to now celebrate is that how it started from opening borders. And then you mentioned that actually it's a big milestone uh, this year in uh, a celebration of U.S. Um, Mexico diplomatic relations. I believe it's 100 years. Yeah, we are celebrating this year the 100 years of the consular relation with Houston. Uh, since it was uh, opened, the consulate in November in 1920, um, the, the consulate and the community, community itself has uh, faced different uh, challenges. Now you can see that in the beginning, there was a type of Mexican community coming to Houston. And as I was telling you before, now you see a very dynamic diaspora in the different uh, stages of the society. So. Uh, we want to really embrace this, uh, this relation and to let people know that uh, Houston and Mexico has a relation that goes beyond the immigration issues. Because if we just take in account that we are the first trade partner of Texas, imagine if you, if you don't 
celebrate this important uh, yeah. uh, anniversary. So we are thinking in the way to do that. We were uh, considering to have different types of, of events during this year, but now with the COVID, we need to really rethink what we are going to do in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of uh, things to recognize, a lot of things to celebrate, and for sure so many things have happened in the hundred years of uh, uh, our partnership uh, here in Houston. Yeah, you know that the, now the consulate is a welcoming space. Uh, we are, have just recently signed an MOU with PLAS, uh, an organization, an organization dedicated to the, to to see that the rights of the LGBT community are respected. And uh, because the consulate is a welcoming site for everybody, that's why we are working now with this organization in order to, to help also the members of our community that are working in that, in that uh, area. Sure. Um, uh, earlier, we also had, not in the, today's conversation, but uh, really touched me with the, the feminist foreign policy. Um, I had not heard much about it, it's shame on me, um, and I want to make sure that you touch upon and highlight. May I have some of your thoughts on the, the, your, uh, your country's uh, foreign policy? Yes, you know, the feminist foreign policy was, uh, well, the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, said that Mexico was going to adopt a fe feminist foreign policy during the General Assembly of the United Nations. And since then, we have been working at the, all the representation, all the embassies, and even at the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs with a gender view. So what does that mean? That all our, all our programs and all our services need to focus or need to have this gender view because uh, you need to take into account, as we were telling also before, the other 50% of the community, we just recently, well, on the beginning of the year, I think, we have um, a round table with the consuls, women consuls that are here. We have the presence of the consul of Noruega, mm -hmm. uh, Spain, uh, Indonesia, and, uh, and, well, I was coordinating this uh, round table. And you can see that the different views of these countries were, uh, have something in common. We identified that uh, there was very hard for a woman to reach one of the most important diplomatic uh, stages, like being a general consul or being an ambassador. Yeah. It's co so complicated for women to find the way to go to reach those levels because the diplomacy has all, always been seen like something something reserved for men. You, the, it was identified like the men are good in negotiation. Men are tough to, to really negotiate with another country. You need to be tough to negotiate with another country. So those type of, of views are not real because uh, women know how to negotiate, negotiate since we are absolutely, absolutely. We have, yes and we have played a very important role in the peace operation uh, processes in the world now many members of the peace corps uh, you can see that uh, women are may, uh, very important in those uh, corps because they can go to places where men are not allowed to enter and you can have like uh, more sense of what is happening in a conflict if you talk with men or if you talk with the women that are sorry if you talk with the women that are in those countries or in those places yes. so that's why i think that uh, now we need to open diplomacy to women but mainly to put them the, the tools so that they can reach these high levels in diplomacy I, I believe, aren't you the one of the first female uh, consul generals representing Mexico? Yeah, Here? that's incredible. Thank you for bringing that uh, uh, because after 100 years, I'm the first woman here at the consulate. So that can show you that uh, uh, it takes us a lot of time to really yeah. move forward. And uh, I think that I hope that we can see 
more women here, for example, in Houston, there are like 90 something consul generals in Houston, but only like 15% of them are women and only like seven of them are uh, career diplomats. Yeah. So that gives you the, 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 that represents in a very clear way how much we need to move forward if we really want to reach the, the, the goals of the 2030 agenda. We only have 10 more year, years to really have uh, equality. So that's something that we need to really work harder. Yeah. And I, I believe your ambassador also is female, is that correct? Yes, my ambassador and uh, the three main consulates here in the United States uh, are uh, headed by women. For example, you have a very uh, good consul general in Los Angeles a very recognized uh, um, uh, consul general in Chicago and here in Houston, well, I'm another woman. So the, our minister, Marcelo Ebrard, uh, is really working with, to, with this gender view, but also to empower women diplomats at the Minister of Foreign Affairs. That's fantastic. Uh, on a bit on that, how do you see this playing out on a daily basis, perhaps? Uh, as in within the consulates and other initiatives uh, that perhaps you come in touch on day to day? Yeah, well, we hope that we can continue uh, working with this uh, window for the integral attention of women, put women in the center of all our programs, address situations of domestic violence, but we also want to, to reach uh, science women that work in the science in these STEAM careers. Uh, for example, tomorrow, today we are going to have at six o'clock, at five o'clock, our Facebook Live is going to have a, a very interesting presentation with a Mexican woman that works in NASA. She mm -hmm. wants to share his ex her experience uh, so that the young generations can also see an opportunity in these STEAM careers. Absolutely, that's really, I we salute you. women in science. Yes, yeah, in science and everywhere. So I really yeah. salute you and uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, not only about uh, having this initiative, but actually uh, carrying it through and we seeing results. And we, we here in Houston have a pleasure to, to know you and to host you. This will really be a, in the power dialogue today, I, all I wanted to, to say hello, to see how you are doing, and I'm so glad that you are doing you well, your family is doing well, that your staff and the rest of the team and support system is doing well and staying healthy. So we will thank you so much for your time, and for sure look forward to celebrating the 100 year uh, diplomacy and our ongoing cooperation between the two nations as we start returning back to normal and really hope to have a, a big fiesta celebration uh, when the years to come that we can actually uh, celebrate this accomplishment. So again, thank you for your time on behalf awesome. of the Affairs Council and be well. Thank you very much, Sanja, and be sure that we will continue working with the World Affairs Council and that uh, if you ever need something from the consulate, we are a very open and friendly place. Come and visit us. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. Perfect.